In a few years, businesses will hire AI agencies composed entirely out of AI agents. It will be absolutely normal for us to go to a software development shop that contains only one or two people. For example, this AI lab called Cognition recently released the first AI software engineer named Devin that outperforms everything else that we have ever seen on the SWE benchmark. It can literally train its own AI, learn unfamiliar technologies, contribute to production repos, and even complete some side hustles on Upwork. But what many people don't realize is that this comparison on their chart is made between standard large language models like Claude or GPT-4, while Devin Devin, sorry, has access to additional tools like Terminal, Code Editor, and even its own browser. So, all this is is literally just a cleverly prompted LLM with a bunch of tools, and this lab has already gotten more than 20 millions of dollars in funding. Personally, I don't believe that they're heading in the right direction, and I'll explain exactly why later, but what this really shows is that we're merely scratching the surface of what's possible here. So, in this video, I will share with you my entire experience developing custom AI agent systems for companies of all sizes, ranging from small firms of five Five to 10 employees to corporations with 30,000 plus people. In fact, by the end of this video, you'll be able to build your own fully functional social media marketing agency that will generate ad copy, create ad images with DALI 3 and reliably post them on Facebook. Here's the game plan. We'll start with an overview of this new AI agent developer role and what it entails. Next, we'll unravel what AI agents truly are. After that, we'll take a tour of the most popular AI agent frameworks at your disposal. Disposal. Then I'll be pulling back the curtain on my own framework, giving you an insider's perspective on how it works and how you can leverage it in your own projects. And finally, we'll get hands-on as we build a fully functional social media marketing agency ready to take on new clients and generate profits. This will be a comprehensive guide, highlighting my entire process from start to finish. So make yourself comfortable and let's dive in. First, let me define this new AI agent developer role and why I believe it will be one of the most in-demand skills in 2024. Well, numerous studies and industry experts predict that we're headed towards full labor automation in the next decade. While I totally agree with this projection, I don't think it will be a self-driven process. As AI models become increasingly intelligent, they're certainly going to gain a broader understanding of the world. However, they will never know how a specific company operates internally, simply because such data is rarely made public. As we saw in 2023, businesses don't just just want to incorporate standard large language models into their processes. They want to customize them and at least enrich them with their own personal data. The reason I believe why labs like Cognition will soon fail is because they lack customization. To fully automate a company like Google, you need more than just a super intelligent AI developer. We need to make sure that this developer has access to all the necessary tools, infrastructure, and internal knowledge before it can actually perform any tasks. This is where AI agent developers come in. So, an AI agent developer is someone who fine-tunes AI agents based on internal business processes. As an AI agent developer, my primary responsibility is to equip AI with all the necessary resources and then ensure it knows how and when to use them in production. The primary skills required for an AI agent developer role can significantly vary from project to project. This topic deserves its own separate video by itself, so if you're interested, please let me know in the comments. Soon, I'll walk you through exactly how to accomplish all of this, but for now, we need to understand what AI agents truly are. A lot of people say that AI agents are just instructions, knowledge, and actions. And that's sort of true, but that's not exactly what AI agents are. That's how we make AI agents. In fact, AI agents are much more than that. Let me explain. To answer what AI agents truly are, we need to unpack the difference between standard 1.0 AI automations and more sophisticated 2.0 AI agent-based applications. Picture a straightforward customer support automation where an LLM must label each incoming email and must respond to it, pulling some additional context from a vector database. Does this sound like an agent or a mere AI automation? You may have noticed that it doesn't quite feel like an agent, right? But why? It has knowledge from your vector 
vector database, it has some instructions on how to respond and it performs an action of attaching a label. And the distinction lies in the fact that I said that it must generate a label and must answer each email. You see, the fundamental difference between automations and agents is that agents possess decision-making capabilities. So in 1.0 AI automations, every single procedure like context retrieval, response generation and labeling is hard-coded into the backend logic. This means that it literally cannot deviate from this logic no matter what. If the automation is tasked with responding to emails, it cannot neglect to respond. And while this rigidity works well for certain use cases, it completely fails as soon as some unexpected circumstances arise. Imagine for example if your customer support mailbox receives an inquiry about a potential partnership with your platform. If this scenario wasn't accounted for in the 1.0 AI automation, it would handle it like any other support inquiry, potentially causing a missed opportunity. On the contrary, 2.0 all AI agent based applications have a different approach. While they still equip AI agent with the necessary tools, context and instructions, they grant the agent the autonomy on how to utilize these tools by itself. Instead of feeding your context into a prompt on every request, you empower the agent to retrieve it only when it's needed. This flexibility means that the agent can adapt accordingly. So in our previous example, the agent would recognize that it's dealing with an inquiry outside of its expertise and then then it could use other available tools if possible. For example, it could reach out to your human support agent or it could send a notification in Slack. Overall, what AI agents truly are is a new way of thinking about how to apply AI in various applications. It's a paradigm shift rather than a simple technique. Even in my agency, we all began with simple 1.0 AI automations. But as my clients saw the tangible benefits they offered, they yearned for more, more advanced capabilities and automation of increasingly complex tasks. Over time, we reached a stage where I wouldn't even call it automation anymore. It was more akin to outsourcing as some of the processes we automated literally required multiple people to manually carry them out and the performances were never the same. Now having said all this, where do agent swarms come in? To truly grasp the concept of agent swarms, it's crucial to understand that all intelligence is environment dependent. For instance, I might excel when it comes to programming, but I'm utterly lost when it comes to cooking. I would not last as a cook even in McDonald's for a day. I just basically eat meat and nothing else. This applies to both AI agents and your own employees. You can't assign 10 different roles even to the smartest person in the world. Likewise, even when we reach GPT-100, I would still not recommend assigning so many different responsibilities to a single agent. Firstly, by removing all of this unnecessary context for a given process, you simply save on tokens. And secondly, even if GPT-100 wouldn't get confused handling 10 different roles, the users of such a system certainly would. So what agent swarms really allow you to do is separate responsibilities for different environments just like in real world organizations. This results in three main benefits. First, it dramatically reduces hallucinations. I found that after you add 7 to 10 tools to a single GPT-4 agent, it starts to get confused. But when you split those tools into multiple agents, you almost completely eradicate this problem. Secondly, you can outsource much more complex tasks because the longer the sequence of your agents is, the more tasks they can handle without direct supervision. And lastly, it makes the whole system much easier to scale. You see, most of my clients don't stop on a single AI agent integration and often try to automate increasingly complex processes over time. So when the need arises, instead of adjusting your existing system and then debugging it all over again, you can simply add another agent and leave all the previous agents as they are. In fact, this last problem of scaling is so common among my clients that this week we are releasing the first of its kind AI agents as a service subscription. Basically, if you're a business owner, you can now pay us a fixed fee per month and we will develop as many many AI agents as you need, but we will work on them one at a time. Our goal is to provide a flexible and scalable solution that grows with your needs. So if you're interested, you can apply right now using the link below at a temporarily discounted price. However, if you're inclined to take on this journey by yourself, that's perfectly fine too, because next I'm going to walk you through my entire process from start to end. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's start with a brief overview of all the multi-agent frameworks at your disposal. The the first project is the one you've probably heard of before called Autogen by Microsoft. The main feature of Autogen is multi-agent chats. It was 
developed as a research experiment and was quite groundbreaking at the time. However, the problem with Autogen is that it has extremely limited conversational patterns that are super hard to customize. If you look at its code in Autogen, the next speaker is determined with an extra call to the model that emulates role play between the agents. Let me just read it to you. Read the above conversation, then select the next speaker from agent names, only return the role. I mean, not only this is extremely inefficient, but it also makes the whole system absolutely uncontrollable. A lot of people report that agents constantly hallucinate because there is no clear separation of concerns when it comes to tool execution. One agent might write the code, but because it needs to be executed by user proxy or some other agent, it often results in hallucinations, which is a huge problem in production. The next framework that has recently been getting a ton of attention is called Crew AI. Crew AI was developed as a side project and it introduces the concept of process into agent communication. This provides some semblance of control over the communication flow. However, just like in Autogen, the conversation flows are extremely limited, offering only sequential or hierarchical options. In a sequential process, basically all your agents communicate to each other one by one. And in a hierarchical, there is one manager agent that communicates to everyone else. Obviously, this is not how real organizations are structured. For example, can you imagine Imagine Sandar Pichai manually instructing a QA tester who tested this amazing new sign-in screen. Additionally, in Crew AI, the manager agent is hard-coded for you, which for some reason people find cool. However, imagine if you want this agent to first search the web or get additional context before deciding who it should speak next to. Try doing that in Crew AI. The biggest problem with Crew AI, however, is that it was built on top of LangChain, which was released before any function calling models. This means that there is no automatic type checking or error correction when it comes to tool execution. The descriptions for these tools are also extremely limited. Recently, Crew AI introduced a way to overcome this by extending a base tool class. However, this process is definitely not straightforward as it could have been. The goal, backstory, the role, and the tasks that you need to define when you're creating your crew are simply prompt templates that also take away control from you as a developer. Without these prompt templates, the crew AI simply would not be able to function. The only advantage of crew AI is that you can use it with open source models. Now, I personally would never utilize any of these frameworks in production for my clients, which is why I developed my own framework called Agency Swarm. In this framework, there is not a single hard-coded prompt, it is easily customizable with uniform communication flows, and it is extremely reliable in production because it provides automatic type checking and validation for all tools with the instructor library. It is the thinnest possible wrapper around OpenAI Assistance API, which means that you have full control over all your agents. So whether you add a manager agent, define goals, processes or not, whether you create a sequential or hierarchical flow or even combine both with a communication tree that is 50 levels in depth, I don't care. It is still going to work. Your agents will determine who to communicate with next based on their own descriptions and nothing else. The disadvantage of my framework is that it is fully based on OpenAI Assistance API. And to answer your question right now, no, we're not going to support any open source models. So now let me answer this question, why Assistance API for AI agent development? Well, that's a good question, because if you look at all the previous OpenAI endpoints, you'll find that the Assistance API isn't different in almost any way. It does provide a couple tools like a code interpreter and retrieval, and you can upload files, but it's not that big of a deal. However, it was a game changer for me as an AI agent developer. And the reason for this is state management. You see, with the Assistance API, you can attach instructions, knowledge, and actions directly to each new agent. This not only allows you to separate various responsibilities, but also to scale your system seamlessly without having to worry about any underlying data management or about your agents confusing tools as in all other frameworks. Agent state management is the primary reason why my framework is fully based on OpenAI Assistance API. If costs are a concern for you, simply use GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is much better than any open source models you can run locally unless you spend $10,000 on your computer. And if data privacy is a concern, you can easily use it with Azure OpenAI that doesn't even share data with OpenAI itself. 
To get started creating your agent swarms using my framework, you need to understand three essential entities, which are agents, tools, and agencies. Agents are essentially wrappers around assistants in Assistants API. They include numerous methods that simplify the agent creation process. For instance, instead of manually uploading all your files and adding their IDs when creating an assistant, you can just specify the folder path. The system will then automatically attach all files from that folder to your assistant. It also stores all your agent settings in a special settings.json file. Therefore, if your agent's configuration changes, the system will automatically update your existing assistant on OpenAI rather than creating a new one. The most commonly used parameters when creating an agent are name, description, instructions, model, and tools. These are all pretty self-explanatory. There are no preset templates for goals, processes, backstories, etc. You simply include all of them into instructions. Additional parameters include files folder, schemas folder, and tools folder. As I said, all files from your files folder will be automatically indexed and uploaded to OpenAI. All tools from your tools folder will be attached to an assistant as well. And all OpenAPI schemas from your schemas folder will be automatically converted into tools, allowing your agents to easily call third-party APIs. Additional properties, API params, and API headers are also available if your API requires authentication. However, I do recommend creating all tools from scratch using Instructor as it gives you a lot more control. I previously posted an in-depth detailed tutorial on Instructor which includes a brief conversation with its creator Jason Leo. Check it out if you're interested. In essence, Instructor allows you to integrate a data validation library called Pydenic with function calls. This ensures that all agent inputs actually make sense before any actions are executed, minimizing production errors. For instance, if you have a number division tool, you can verify that the division is not by zero. If it is, the agent will see the error and automatically correct itself before executing any logic. To begin creating tools in Agency Swarm with Instructor, create a class that extends a base tool, add your class properties, and implement the run method. Remember, the agent uses docstring and all field descriptions to understand when and how to use your tool. So, for our number division tool, the docstring should clearly state that this tool divides two numbers and then we also have to describe all parameters accordingly. The next step is to define your execution logic within the run method. You can access all defined fields through the self object. To make some fields optional, use the optional type from Pydenic. To define available values for your agent, use a literal or enumerator type. There are also many cool tricks that you can do. For instance, you can add a chain of thought parameter inside the tool which will save you on token costs and latency because the agent will only plan its actions when using this tool instead of on every request if you use this prompt globally. To add your validation logic, use field or model validators from Pydenic. In this division tool example, it makes sense to add a field validator that checks if the division is not by zero, returning an error if it is. Because tools are arguably the most important part of any agent-based system, I created this custom GPT to help you get started much faster. Say for example, I need a tool that searches the web with SERP API. As you can see, it instantly generates a base tool with parameters like query as a string and num results as an integer, including all relevant descriptions. You can find the link to this tool on our Discord. The final component of the agency swarm framework is the agency itself, which is essentially a collection of agents that can communicate with one another. When initializing your agency, you add an agency chart that establishes communication flows between your agents. In contrast to all other frameworks, communication flows in agency swarm are uniform, meaning that you can define them in any way you want. If you place your agents in a top-level list inside the agency chart, these agents can communicate with the user. And if you add your agents together inside the second-level list, these agents can communicate with one another. So, to create a basic sequential flow, add a CO agent to the top-level list, then create a second-level list with a CO, developer, and a virtual assistant. In this flow, the user communicates with the CO, who then communicates with the developer and the virtual assistant. Assistant. If you prefer a hierarchical flow, simply place those agents into two separate second level lists with the CEO. Remember, the communication flows in Agency Swarm are directional. So, in our previous example, the CEO can initiate communication with the developer, who can then respond in this chat.
chat, but the developer cannot initiate communication with the CEO, much like in real organizations. If you still want the developer to assign tasks to the CEO, simply add another list with the developer first and the CEO second. I always recommend starting with as few agents as possible and then adding more agents only after the previous ones are working as expected. Advanced parameters inside the agency class include async mode, threats callbacks, settings callbacks, and these are useful when deploying your agent swarms on various backends. Be sure to check out our documentation for more information. When it comes to running your agency, you have three options. You can use the Gradio interface with the demo Gradio command, the terminal version with the run demo method, or get a completion with the get completion method, which is similar to all previous chat completions APIs. Now let's create our own social media marketing agency together so you can see my entire process from start to finish. All right, for those who are new here, please install and upgrade Agency Swarm using the command pip install upgrade Agency Swarm. And to get started quickly, I usually run the Agency Swarm Genesis command. This will activate the Genesis agency, which will create all your agents for you. Of course, it doesn't get everything right just yet, but it does speed up the process significantly. In my prompt, I'm just gonna say that I need a Facebook marketing agency that generates ad copy, creates images with DALI 3, and then posts them on Facebook. As you can see, we now have our initial agency structure with three agents. The ad copy agent, the image generator agent, and a Facebook manager agent. I really like how the Genesis agency has divided these responsibilities among three different agent roles. However, I'd like to adjust the communication flows a bit and adopt a sequential flow, so I will instruct the Genesis CEO accordingly. Now, as you can see, we have a sequential agency structure with three communication levels. So now I'm gonna tell it to proceed with the creation of those agents. This process does take some time, so I'm gonna skip this part and come back when we are finally ready to fine tune our agents. After all our agents have been created, you can see that the CEO tells me that I can run this agency with the python agency.py command. All the folders from my tools and agents are also displayed on the left. So the next step is to test and fine tune all these tools. We'll start with the image generator agent. The Genesis agency has created one tool for this agent called image generator. It's impressive how close this tool is to what I was actually planning to implement myself. As you can see, it uses OpenAI to generate an image with a simple image prompt, taking ad copy, theme, and specific requirements and inserting them into this prompt template. Yes, my friends, AI has just learned to prompt itself. However, there is an issue. It uses an outdated OpenAI package version with the DaVinci Codex model, which is actually designed for code generation. So let's fix this now together. First, I'll load a new OpenAI client with a convenience method from Agency Swarm Util. I'll also increase the timeout because image generation can take some time. After that, I'll adjust the API call to use the new DALI 3 model. And then I'll set the timeout back to default. There is one more thing that we have to do. We have to ensure that our agents can actually use this image when posting the ad. So what I'm gonna do next is create a new save image method that will save this image locally. But here's the kicker. I do not want my agents to pass this image path to one another because if any hallucinations occur, it could cause some issues. Instead, I'll save this path to a shared state. Essentially, shared state allows you to share certain variables in all tools across all agents. So instead of having the agent manually pass the image path to another agent, you can simply save it in one tool and access it in another. You can also perform some complex validation logic across various agents, which I'll show you soon. Now we are finally ready to test this tool. You can do this by adding a simple if name equals main statement at the end and then initializing the tool with some example parameters. After that, you can print the result of the run method. Don't forget to load the environment with your OpenAI key by adding the load.env method at the top. As you can see, we now have this image generated and saved locally as expected. This means we can now proceed with adjusting the next tool, which is the ad copy generator tool within the ad copy agent. This tool is also very similar to how I would personally design it myself. So I'll just adjust the prompt a bit and save the results into the shared state. Moving on to the next Facebook manager agent, the Genesis agency decided to create two tools for us. The first one is the ad performance monitor tool and the second one is the ad scheduler and poster tool. While these tools are also quite close, creating an ad on Facebook requires a few more steps. Specifically, we need to first create a campaign and an ad set before we can post this ad. I will use the tool creator custom GPT to request two additional tools, the ad campaign starter and the ad set creator tool. 
To run these tools, we first need to install the Facebook Business SDK, which you can do with this pip command. Next, we need to create our Facebook app. Go to the Facebook developer website, click create app, select other for the use case, then business for the app type, add your app name and click create app. Then click on add product and add marketing API. Go back to app settings, copy your app ID, app secret and insert them into the environment file. Now we have to get our access token by visiting the Facebook API Explorer website and adding the following permissions. After that, simply copy this token and also put it into the end file. Working with Facebook API can be a challenge as it is known to be one of the most complex APIs out there. So I won't delve into the details of how I fine tune these tools. The process is extremely similar. You simply adjust the tool, then you test it and you repeat until it works as expected. One tool we do have to check out, however, is the ad creator tool. As you can see in this tool, we are actually utilizing the ad copy, ad headline and image path from the shared state that we saved earlier. I have also included a model validator that checks the presence of all these necessary parameters. If one of the parameters is not defined, the system throws a value error and instructs the agent on which tool it needs to use first. This approach significantly enhances the reliability of the entire system as it ensures that the Facebook manager agent cannot post any ads until all the required steps like image generation have been completed. So as you can see, for example, if the image path is missing, I'm instructing the the Facebook Manager agent to first instruct the image generator agent to generate this image. After successfully testing all our tools, the final step is to refine the instructions. It is a good practice to include how specifically your agents should communicate with each other and also specify an exact step-by-step -step process for them to follow. Lastly, I decided to make a few adjustments to the communication flows. First, I'd like to establish a direct line of communication with our Facebook Manager agent, so I'll include it in a top-level list. Also, I'll allow our CEO agent to communicate directly with both the Facebook Manager agent and the Image Generator agents. Now that we have made these adjustments, we're ready to run our agency. It is as simple as running the python agency.py command and then opening the provided radio interface link in your browser. So let's see how it works. I'll kindly ask for an advertisement to be created for my AI development agency called Arsen AI. As you can see, the CEO immediately instructs the ad copy agent, which promptly provides a clear headline and an ad copy for my agency, stating revolutionize your business with AI. Next, the CEO commands the image generator agent to create an image for the ad copy, resulting in this futuristic visual for our campaign. And finally, the CEO directs the Facebook manager agent to commence the campaign using the campaign starter tool. It then creates an ad set and executes the ad creation function, posting this ad on Facebook. You can see this newly generated Facebook ad complete with ad copy, headline and image live on my Facebook account. Impressive, right? But what if you want to analyze your campaign's performance? Well, you can do this by directly messaging the Facebook manager agent as it was included in the top level list. As you can see now, it uses the ad performance monitor tool and then informs me that unfortunately, currently there is no data because it takes some time for an ad to reach its audience. In conclusion, I'd like to briefly share my roadmap for this framework. First, I plan to establish multi-agency communication. This feature will allow the integration of multiple agencies for super complex use cases. Next, I'll focus on enhancing Genesis Agency, because with multi-agency communication, the Genesis Agency will be able to test other agencies during their creation. The goal is to reach a point where there is almost no need to modify tools or instructions for simple agencies like the one we've just created. And lastly, we will continue to regularly update this framework to include the latest releases from the open AI Assistance API. With the upcoming features like memory and web browsing, the possibilities are exciting to say the least. So stay connected on our Discord where we provide some additional resources and where you can always find help from other members developing custom AI agent systems with my framework. Additionally, we're always on the lookout for new talent. So if you're interested and you have previous example building agent swarms using my framework, you can apply through our job postings channel. Lastly, if you would like to see more examples of non-standard AI agent integrations, make sure to check out this video next where I deploy a production-ready GitHub code analysis agency that runs only on the backend using GitHub Actions. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.